This is an example slide from my walk cycle course, which you can find in the LinkedIn Learning Library, the site formerly known as lynda.com. If you want to watch that course, I'll put the link in the notes below. This uh, movie here will be sort of an accessory to that. So if you want to get an idea of the material we cover in it, this is a great starter for it. It won't cost you anything. So let's uh, take a look at this. It's a bog standard walk. I'm not doing anything fancy with the body or the head. Straight up, straight down. There's enough to be worrying about with the legs and the arms. We use a blue horizontal line to help us position the ankle of the uh, right foot and a red for the left. So we also have the option of animating straight across the screen. The reason why I chose to do it in place is because when we animate in place, then we can clean it across the screen in whatever software that we use. So this gives you a flexibility that you don't have if you lock it in like this. The advantage of this kind of walk is that basically it's easier on your brain. So if you find you prefer to start your first walk cycle going across the screen, that's totally fine. Let's take a look at the front view as well. Again, another slide from my course. And uh, essentially we have the same procedure, slightly different methodology, which I might do in a future movie. So let's go and look at some uh, technical issues that we have to contend with. So the horrors of frame rates. So we have our 24 FPS uh, and 30 FPS animation schemes. Most of the work that I do, I do on 24 FPS several reasons for that. I like to hand draw my animation. That means there's fewer drawings. I'm lazy. It's also a heck of a lot of work. Uh, the other thing is that the animation textbooks that people use, the Richard Williams book, Eric Goldberg, all the classic books, when those guys talk about frames, they're old school. They're talking about their 24 frame per second frame. Now take a look at the lower row and when Eric Goldberg says, say hold a drawing for six frames, translate it into 30, that means seven, maybe eight. So you have to pad the numbers very slightly and you know, one or two here and there will probably be okay. But just bear that in mind. So if we're doing a walk cycle, the contact poses on 24 will be number frame number one, then 13, and then back to 25 or number one. On 30, you're looking at one going to 16, and then to 31. So we just incorporate that uh, difference into our process. As we, as we proceed, as we block in the passing position, it'll be seven on 24. If you wanna work on 30, it'll be nine. Basically, that's it. So you might wanna take a screen capture of this image or write down the notes, whatever, no big deal. And the other thing to make note of is that a uh, walk cycle, usually you have counterpose or torque, which will have sort of an opposing action. So that it, as your right shoulder is forward, your, your right hip is back and vice versa. So the, if you imagine two toilet rolls and they're constantly in opposition to one another. So we won't be doing that in this basic walk because again, enough to be getting on with. Uh, I'm in credit free program. I have other movies in my uh, channel about this. Uh, including the brushes that I've used. So let's just select my uh, loose brush. My animation doc uh, timeline thing is nowhere to be found. So if you are working in Krita, uh, then it's under settings, dockers, animation timeline. We'll show you the animation layer. This really isn't a Krita tutorial per se, but if you do use Krita, great. Um, you can follow along in any software that you like, or if you're drawing on paper, no, no bother. So I'm going to go to this, we'll call it rough. So we're going to do our first drawing here and I'm going to keep it loose. Let's zoom in a little bit. And again, let's be strict with ourselves and tell ourselves to not be too picky about it. So light strokes. So I'm going to just last do that. Control T, rotate a bit. T, brush. So the other thing I want to do is to make a guide layer uh, with the... Uh, and back to our rough. So that way I don't really have to worry anymore about um, sliding the feet left or right, up or down, which would not be good. So let's draw the other foot in on this side. This is the closest one. So I'm going to just erase here. I'm not gonna do the arms at this part of the process because I think that would overwhelm you if you were, I do. I'm just gonna assume that you're just, or maybe some of you anyway, might be doing a walk cycle for the first time. And again, we're trying to create something that would be recognizable to like a classic era uh, animation. So it's a you know, pretty tricky process in its own way. Anyway, uh, shading in the back foot. I wouldn't normally do that, but this is again, just to simplify it so we can follow along uh, for the course of this. So now we have one drawing of the torso, head. Again, see how I'm starting to 
tie this down even a little too much. That's about right. So now the problem is uh, we need to do the next drawing. So the, in Krita, we click on this image here, and now I can go to the next drawing and start drawing. And if I click on this button here, I have a light table. So whatever software you use, hopefully as some kind of light table or a way to flicker backwards and forwards, we can do this in Photoshop. And again, I have a, um, a course in the LinkedIn Learning Library showing how to do this in Photoshop as well. So uh, Photoshop has an animation timeline. And if you have your favorite brushes, the great thing about it is you can uh, animate anything in Photoshop that you can draw. It's not as nice as Credit, but it's still pretty decent. And I've done some nice work in that, including a music video. So uh, it's definitely worth playing with. So basically now what we're doing is just drawing the opposite of the original drawing. Let's put this off. I don't have a sponsor, so if you want to support my work and help it to continue, you can subscribe to my Patreon. I'm making new animation projects week by week and providing animation assets that can be downloaded and used. I also have a very large collection of tutorials in the LinkedIn Learning Library covering animation and design, and I'm putting all the links to these in the notes below. And I have my keyframe shortcut set to toggle from one to the other. And here's where it's just nice to have the ability to shade in. So now we can see the alternate. And I'm going to draw this through a little better here. I have to say, once I develop this, uh, this particular brush in my uh, tags here, uh, I really began to enjoy Krita a lot more because it gives me a great feeling of drawing in a traditional medium. It took me a while to find it. And again, I have a movie in the library about it in my uh, YouTube channel about that. I'll put in the no that, uh, that in the notes below also. So here we go, toggle backwards and forwards. And now we want to go to a duplicate of this. So we right click here and clone keyframe, go to here and right click and paste keyframe. And you see these little jaggy lines. Whenever you click on a clone, anything that you draw on this will now be on this. It's the same drawing. So I'll undo that. So the beauty of that is we can create cycles. So the other thing we want to do is to stretch this. And I think we can just drag and drop to here. Click and drag to, uh, I think it was on number 13, was it? So yeah, it's number 13. And now they're laid out properly uh, on the time. And I think I should also go into here and set some preferences. Frame rates on 24 and the clip should end on 25. That's our cycle. So now we have, if I hit play, it'll just loop to there. So the next thing to do is starts to get interesting and that's where we do the passing position. And this, this allows us now to show some of the planning of the foot placement. So it's kind of halfway between the, the two contacts. So from, from this point here, this left foot will impact the ground and slide through to about here and, and then move to there. So I need to make another layer just so I can sketch this out. So we can keep this kind of rough. That'll be number one. And imagine that this heel here, so that will be the position for number 25. And the passing position will be, if it's going to be halfway between these, which I think it will, but close enough to anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, three, four, five. We'll keep just a, just a hint to there. And that'll be frame number seven, which you can see here. So 25 and one are the contacts, and seven is the passing position. So now we know where to put the foot, make sure we're drawing on the rough layer. Again, it's this ankle point here, so it, it'll be hitting the ground there. So if, if I put onion skin on too, I can place it a bit better. And we need to make sure that the, the length is, uh, I'm gonna actually favor the, uh, the beginning. So the, the length should be about the same as well. So one thing I've also done in Krita is I've configured shortcuts for next keyframe and, and back a keyframe. And if you want to know how to do this in Krita, you go settings, configure Krita under animation. And I have made a next frame is F2 and previous frame is F1. That will go one, two, three, four. But if you have keyframes set up here that are se separated, it's good to set them to different uh, letters. So I have A and S, but I recommend you have a forward keyframe and a back keyframe. That will really simplify this kind of toggling now that I'm going to do. So now we have the foot in the down position. Uh, normally it helps to have the passing position slightly higher than on the contact. It doesn't have to be, but for a basic walk, this would work. 
Now you see how when you start doing stuff like this, you're starting to guess uh, a little bit at the height. That can be a bit tricky. So we, we could certainly do it like this. Let me show you a cheat because we are working with a scene here that's quite um, stiff really. So I will just go and trace directly over the original layer. So now we know that our basic shape and volumes will be fine. It doesn't have to be identical, but it's fairly close. So now I can hit the lasso and hit the V key and then just drag it up a bit. And now when I go from contact to passing to this, we're starting to see it. Now I can switch the onion off and now I can sort of shade in that back foot a bit. And on the passing position, we can just lightly sketch this in. We can keep that foot fairly straight. And we could also do the kind of thing that you tend to lose in a lot of puppet animation when you can do these really nice sort of natural folds of the leg. I don't care how good a rig is uh, with a puppet system. Very often they, they look riggy. And I've worked with them and they're great fun when you get them working. But you can really push things a lot further with the drawing uh, than you can with a, even a very good puppet. You can, do, you can do different things as well. So anyway, let's go with that. Also do things like putting in little creases. It's, these tend to get left out with puppet systems because they're a real headache to put in, but they're so easy to do when you're drawing. You can even begin to squash the belly a little bit. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so maybe you can see a bit better. Okay, and notice as well how it's starting to look like it's a real drawing, by which I mean, it doesn't feel like I'm drawing this on the on a digital tablet, which is really nice. So the other thing then would be to do the opposite passing position, which is going to be here. And I think if uh, I start drawing again, the uh, ankle will be uh, hitting about this this line here, close enough to that. And I'll put onion skin back on. And same thing again here. We can cheat a little bit. If this is your first time to sort of hand draw anything, go easy on yourself. It can be you know a bit of a hill. Okay. Let's lasso that and pop the brush. And I think I can put onion skin off now too. Onion skin is great for certain things, but if you leave it on all the time, it will it can really um, make life difficult uh, to see. It makes it hard for you to get into the actual drawing, to feel the animation properly. So only use it when you absolutely have to. And back in the day, it would be a physical backlight. You would draw, flip a switch and the light will go on on your drawing table. So now we, uh, you know, same thing with the onion skin. One thing I want to do here as well to help with some visual hygiene, I'm going to color code these. So I'm going to make all the key drawings gray. And for now, I'm just going to make the uh, passings red. I'm going to change that in a little bit, but just to have a visual cue that they're different because it's easy to get lost in this. We, we need to make the passing position on the other side look similar to the first passing position as possible. Otherwise, the walk would be asymmetrical. So. We can put onion skin on if we want, but I think here we can just eyeball it. So it's going to be like this one, but on the other side. And also, don't be afraid to draw through. See how I'm drawing the foot. Rather than drawing to here and taking it up there, that can often produce a disjointed drawing. So don't be afraid to draw through. And then we have a magic eraser, which can get rid of that. And I'm just going to shade that in. Okay, so I can actually switch off, for now anyway, the uh, the guide layer. So here's our walk with just the passing position uh, with only the legs. So at this point, what I want to do is to add in the, uh, the down position and the up position. Our contact's on one, our passing is on seven, the low will be on four. Then the way I've laid this one out is slightly uh, different. It's, this is going to involve animating on ones. You know, I could have spread this out and animate on twos, um, but I think I wanted to smooth this out to have the most even position as possible. So, you know, we're not tied into having the passing on seven. The passing could be on eight. Uh, we could put it on all kinds of different frames, but again, very bog standard walk here. So let's just go with this for now. So the passing is on seven, so I have it on the wrong frame there. So we have five in-betweens and five in-betweens. And you see how easily I was able to correct that. Ah, I know what's throwing me. So uh, Krita has a zero frame. So what I'm going to do is move my drawing. That was completely wrecking my, uh, my mathematics. And we can actually, here's a little tip, which uh, one of my uh, viewers uh, clued me into. Get rid of the zero frame. So we start on one. We just go to this little thing here and clip start one. And now when I hit start, there'll still be a zero frame there, but it won't impact this anymore. And now I have like my perfect uh, mathematics back. So I'm going to put in the uh, 
the down position here and uh, let's make this one I guess gray again so let's put the onion skin on and we can change onion skin settings as well so we can ex expand them and contract them the great thing about credit it's very uh, customizable but I just want a couple, so that'll be fine. Anyway, uh, we also want to have our guide layer back for this. So we have uh, the, the down position will be at exactly the halfway one, and that'll be on number four. One reason why you would have a walk cycle on wands would be walk cycles tend to work with panned backgrounds. Panned backgrounds often tend to be on wands. So if you had a walk cycle on twos and the backgrounds on wands, it would strobe. So it actually makes sense to have the walk cycle on wands. Anyway, uh, that's one, four, seven. And then the next one will be my drawing again, number 10. And that'll be number 13 as well, slash 25, more or less the same. Draw on the right rough layer. So. Again, the ankle is here on the red, here on the green, and we want the ankle to be on exactly halfway between them. If you are imprecise with this and you put the foot in the wrong position, the problem with that is that you can have this irregular foot sliding when you begin to, to walk the character on the background. You see it a lot in computer games. So let me switch the thing off here. And again, we want to bring the body down. So I'm going to cheat that again. I'm just going to copy that red one here. Lasso and yank it down a bit. And if I hold shift two and create a, it'll lock it to a vertical or a horizontal. I can bring it down to what I think I can get away with. In more complex walks, we would bring the body forward to compensate a little bit for the, the forward motion. We're not going to do that. We can certainly get away with what we have here. But moving the body forward and looping it around creates incredible complexity that would be far beyond like an entry level walk cycle. The other thing that I can do, which I haven't been doing, is a little bit of hygiene. Which is which I would never forget on a piece of paper. Uh, it could be the contact. This is number four, recoil. Uh, this is number seven, passing. Thirteen, contact. Nineteen, passing. We, if if we don't do that, then the danger would be we'll start getting lost in the drawings. So we don't want to do that, obviously. So we have one, four, and on this one, we want to have the leg lifting off the ground. Uh, I'm moving to here. So the other thing I'm going to do on this paint layer here, uh, so this is the X of the tip of the foot, and we're moving to here. So we want to make sure that the tip of that foot arcs. We don't want it doing anything weird and catching the eye. Notice how too, like this line is starting to get confusing. I'm going to right click on this layer and go layer style, color overlay, normal, and let's make this red. Okay, okay. And hooray, that's a lot easier. Now I, I can keep drawing in black, it'll show up in red. So this gives me a guideline for where the foot should go. So let's go back onto the rough layer. And I think maybe not too high, just a little bit. So that's the tip right there. And the other issue that we have is the ankle too. So let's go back onto that uh, paint layer here. And we have the back of the heel. And it's going from there to here. So again, we want to have some, you might sometimes have like a different arc, but I think if we can try to do something like this, it'll be easier. So again, back to the rough layer, and that gives us an idea for where that should be. Somewhere in this region. And again, the body's coming down on this, so it's certainly creating a, an issue here trying to get this to, to work. And here's the beauty of being able to draw it too. Like we can, I would not want to have to do this with a, a puppet as much because the puppet would start to get tortured. But here we can cheat things. We can squash some of the anatomy in a little bit. I really wasn't sure that was going to work, but I think we'll get away with this. Okay, let's play this. So with that in-betweens, this is going to look like a Japanese anime, a lot of which is on threes or eight frames a second. It'll have that same shutter kind of a feel to it uh, on, until we start adding in the in-betweens. We have our contact, down position, passing position, and I could draw the next recoil, but I'm gonna do the high point and then get that in. So we have one sort of full step finished, and that's a better way of doing it. So the uh, heel position would be about here. This is also the high point. So let's make sure we uh, label it as such as well. Number 10, high point. Uh, let's put the onion back on. And again, I'm going to trace the body in red. Wow, this is already taking longer than I thought. And I'll fast forward some stuff. 
Okay, let's switch off the onion now. So the other uh, issue that you'll find with the high point is this is when the foot starts to lift off. So let's uh, go to that. And then so we can keep this line in here just a shadow so it'll help us with the placement. Oftentimes on this one, the, the leg will be pushing or lifting like with energy uh, to like lift the body up into the air. So you'll often have, it doesn't have to be, but it helps if it's like a bit of a straight leg at this point. And on this one, we have a little freedom with the position of the foot, but uh, let's see where we are going with uh, the heel. So what I want to do is go back to the paint layer and again, watch our, look at where the heel is coming from. Heel is here on the contact. It's here on the recoil. It's here on the passing position. And we want to get it to here on the next one. So we're, we're following an arc pattern roughly like this. So to keep that heel from doing something really weird and ugly, it should stay on roughly a path like this. We can always go back in and doctor these, but I think for now, somewhere around this point here would be good for the heel position. Let's go back onto rough. And again, see how I'm using lots of little strokes to, to build it up, which is nice. It's a much more natural way of getting the effect that you like via common drawing method rather than slamming down one heavy line. I was watching the old Disney Winnie the Pooh uh, a couple of days ago. There was a YouTube video. Somebody was talking about how Pooh has fallen out of copyright. So oh. all hell's breaking loose with people doing like really unpleasant horror movies with Winnie the Pooh that are not half as clever as they think. And about Christopher Robin, the real life Christopher Robin. But I was looking at the, the drawings. You could see where they were actually like overlapping multiple lines on them like that. It wasn't done with these like very clinical like sterile lines that you see a lot of the time in later work. So anyway, let's watch that. It's already feeling like a, a walk. Go back to here. So we have the first step done. Effectively, what we will do is replicate the process on the back end. I'm not going to do that because you've seen me do it here. So you kind of know what's going to be involved on the back end. So what I, instead, what I'm going to do is just do the in-betweens because there are some issues because of, of the timing pattern of this. These in-betweens are annoying because they're one thirds. So the first in-between to be done between here and here is a one third favor. So let me just very really quickly show how to do that. Make sure as well that we have our timing charts all down here. So it'll look like this, two, three, four. And if you want to be really picky about it, it'll look like that. And then they'll all be the same. These are very boring. Some animators, when I work for the Don Bluth studio, you, sometimes you get charts that look like this. And, and, you know, not that bad, but you'd have to like go up to the sixth floor to talk to the animator and say, uh, what the hell is that? And it's like, yeah, thanks for making me climb two flights of stairs because they were so sloppy with the timing charts. But some of the animators are very picky about it. So I try to be, you know, reasonably clean so that if this gets sent to an in-betweener, maybe, you know, you might be sick. You might not even be at work and your scene goes to the studio and now mistakes can happen because you were sloppy with your tics. It's not that big a deal to be clean about it. I'm still angry about that. So let's go back here and we'll do a couple of in-betweens. Start on this one. We want onion skin on and we have our tick layer, I think, set. So again, we don't really have to worry about this right now because it's, it's basically all locked in. So I'm going to do the next in-between, which would be a one, whoop, which would be a one third favor. So the heel will start there. And I don't think there'll be any magic going on on these in-betweens. I think it's only going to be doing boring stuff. So again, one quick cheat that we can do is just trace the red one. I could also copy and paste from the red layer uh, and put it onto the new layer. The only problem with doing that is uh, it's going to start looking cheaty in that it'll look kind of digital because the eye catches that kind of stuff. And I'm trying to get away from that if I can. I'm not immune to cheating like that if I have to, but it's nice to have something that just feels more like a strong right through. So again, we have our first one here and I need to make sure that this guy is one third favoring the red one. So we're coming from red to green. So it should be closer to the red to the green. Otherwise it'll stick. And we certainly don't want that. I'm very lightly now just uh, favoring the red one. And with the in-betweens, we can keep these kind of light. The other thing that we, we do have a little bit of give on this one where we definitely want the heel to move. But there is a bit of discretion here. Like you could do like a strict one third favor and just have it move off like that. And that's what I would have done when I was an actual in-betweener and before I became an animator. You'd be afraid to do this kind of thing. But if you're the, the animator, there's nothing stopping you from holding down the foot here and then peeling up from there. 
that will just give the foot a little more uh, weight. Now, the one thing I've done wrong here is that it needs to keep moving. Uh, so I think we need to just cheat that foot position just a little bit like that. So you can see how doing this kind of stuff does add a little bit of trickiness to it. Okay, onion skin off. And that really allows us then to get that better feeling for whether or not this is going to work. And again, I'll just color this in. Again, I would not do this if I was animating like a proper, proper scene, because then you have this you know, big block. This is to show, just to help you visualize what, what's going on. Starting to feel walky. Let's do the other in-between. Now, remember that when we did that first in-between, it was a one-third favor. The next one will be a half. So it's only the first one of these in-betweens that is the annoying one-third. The next one is way easier. So uh, the other thing too, I like my keys to be gray and then the in-betweens to not be gray. So let's right-click on this and just uh, make it no color. And that way we can differentiate keys from them between. And now we just keep plowing away. So this is the part where you begin to question the nature of human existence because you are going to spend the next few years of your life listening to a screaming cat and trying to draw one line between another line and wonder what it's it all about. So imagine it's 1988 or 89, doing in-betweens on Rockadoodle for Don Bluth. It's the only job in town, and this is it. Hope this works out. So um, uh, let's see here. Let's just lift that foot off the ground. That's, that was kind of getting annoying. So notice too, something's happening here that the in-betweens are getting lighter than the, and this is natural. I always find that the uh, in-betweens, you have to make like a concerted effort to make the in-betweens line weight as dark as the keys. It's just... Uh, as you get faster and more desperate to finish this blasted thing. So just keep going here, go to the next one and onion skin. And we're going from this foot to this one, one third favor. So the heel will be here and we're favoring the red. So we're heading up this time. And again, this is one where I, I will definitely just shift and trace, which is basically just trace the lower one. And that really speeds it up. If we stop it from getting wobbly and then lasso that, and one third favor to the red. Remember again, this heel is sort of arcing, so I think it's kind of smoothing out here a little bit, but be all right. So if you use like a CGI, if you're working with like a blender or rig or what have you, um, the puppet will take care of a lot of this stuff, but you still have to watch out for like arcs and whatnot. Um, a CGI puppet's just as capable of having like a horrible arc as a hand drawn maybe less so but still i can do it and it can look very strange so uh, in the later movie i'll show you how to diagnose arc problems oh uh here again too we want to make that color blue and back to here again backlight and just lay down our foot and we're good to go i have to say when i began working with Krita, i was not at all sure i was going to like it and i thought this could really be a pain to work with because I have traumatic memories of working with GIMP, which is another free program that I, I loathe. Like, I can't stand it. I'm glad that it exists, but I hate it. And I've never liked using it. But it's free, and it's kind of like Photoshop. But Krita is lovely. Like, it's really nice. The only issue that you really have with it is trying to finagle the brushes, because there's so many of them. But once you get the brushes down, you find one you like. Uh, it's great. I'm trying to migrate. I've had so many negative experiences with uh, Adobe and various expensive programs and companies that you pay for that I'm really starting to get kind of antagonistic toward them. Adobe in particular, I had a terrible experience with where I had the Creative Cloud and I was paying good money for that. I'm not a rich man. And then one of their so-called updates just wouldn't work. And I could not get my computer to work with it. And it was a Wacom Mobile Studio 16, like the most expensive thing that I had spent money on, uh, on a rare thing when I actually had the money to spend on it. And we had a thread going on for a long time on the uh, Adobe forum, begging them to fix this and they would not. They just wouldn't do it. So I canceled my cloud subscription at that point. So I'm glad that there are options now getting cranky about Adobe. So, okay, we're going from here to there. So this point here is going to this point here. So there we go. That will be the heel position. The last time I messed around with Linux and the open source and all the free stuff was quite a while back. When I say a while back, I mean like 2010. 
And it all looked promising, but kind of frustrating because there were so many little things that I didn't like. So I thought, let's give it a go again and see if things have improved in 10 years. And yeah, 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 they definitely improved. I haven't used GIMP, but I've messed a little bit with Blender. I love what I see people doing with Blender. I think it's fantastic. And again, to try to break people off these overpriced, overrated programs that are stuffed full of kind of editorialized here, uh, AI crap, stuff that it's very impressive for what it does but I, was, I watched a video today of a guy with a super fast computer and he tried to put text in a photoshop document it froze for like 20 minutes he said i'm in hell I'm like, yeah you are you need to cancel your cloud subscription and uh, upgrade to adobe photoshop cs6 if you can find an old copy of it because this is just getting ridiculous now i, I don't know what's going on but it's creepy yeah. what's going on now kind of is weird the number of programs that have gone kind of bananas on us so stuff that used to be steady as a rock that i really liked too it's kind of sad anyway um let's see we're going from here to here so i'm going to put the tip of the foot i think here yeah yeah, including programs like Opera that I uh, use. I loved it for years. I've used Opera since the early 2000s. They just had, again, one of these strange bugs that they refused to fix. And those of us who were affected by it were maybe 1% of the user base. And if you're in that 1% and one of these bugs hits you, it doesn't like some component or DLL file on your computer that's no fault of yours, then you're out of luck. They're not going to fix it. Um, so Opera browser began corrupting or deleting open tabs on my browser. And these aren't optional to me. I mean, these are like things I need for work. And I know I lost, I lost some stuff. It was like Adobe all over again. This thread went on for, I think, two months now. And they still haven't patched it, as far as I can tell. So by that time, I'd uninstalled it. And now I use a browser called Vivaldi. It's run by people who used to do Opera. And it's lovely. It's really nice. You know, it takes you like a week or two to get used to it. Curry Doctor, I'm going to use a bad word, is quite the term in shitification. Uh, I think it really describes a lot of stuff that's going on. And... Uh, very hard to take. Anyway, so I'm trying to be part of the internet that isn't in shitified yet. So let's just do these last two and then we'll have like a full step. We're going from here to there, from this point to here. And that's our one third favor. And again, we think the be an arc like about this. Now, see what's happening here. There is a danger that as we put in the different uh, tips of the foot, that it'll stick. These are getting kind of close. So I think we have enough room here for them to be spaced properly, but we can change that later if we think that they're going to be jamming. And then the other thing I want to do as well is our usual trick of just shift and trace. And we just favor one third favor to the red where we're coming from. And the other thing that we can do, like I've been using the backlight until now to do all the in-betweens. We don't necessarily need it. Like once, see how I'm hovering the, the pen, the cursor? We can do this too. Sometimes this works. And that gives us the position here. So we can then delete these. It's another way of finding points sometimes. Let me clean that up too. And again, this foot on this drawing, the shadow would be about to here. Because again, that's where it's lifting off to. Okay, getting lost here. So that point here to there. So the in-between heel should be around here. And we can put the backlight on to verify that. And one more in between, and I think then we're good for the a full stride. Let's see if it works or not. And again, here's the area where I'm worried that this foot might stick. You'll be able to have a good sense of that when I play through the whole thing, when it's properly in between. And if it is, there's different ways of fixing it, not the end of the world. Again, I'm shifting and tracing here, and shifting the uh, tracing the red, and then I'll shift it to be a half in between. And you can see how why sometimes it's easier to do it without the backlight because then you can see the, the relative motion and how it works. Sometimes the backlight can be a bit overwhelming with the uh, line upon line. But here I want to really get that precise here to here. So that one's easier. Okay, so let's shade this one in. So one thing that we can do in Crit App, I'm going to shorten the timeline to about 13. Go to here, 1, 3. Now when I play, 
you will see the shading pop all right but um gives us a, a just a general feel for the walk it's not too bad there's a nice up down bounce the leg seems to work uh the only thing i was worried about there was this part here when the foot comes through here and i was worried that it seems to stick there so one thing that we can do if, if we're really worried about that we can change the contact position and that will give us a bit more room to play with but i think for now it's probably all right we could also change the up position as well we could change this you know move the tip to here or we can move the contact position down to here and then the in-betweens will have you know, a little more space that's one possible fix let's play it through one more time not doesn't seem to be sticking too bad. I won't know fully for sure until I do the other side, but you know what? I'm just going to assume that it will. Let's assume the worst. So we'll do, make the correction right now. So we'll go into this one and the beauty of having uh, the digital tools is we can make these changes a bit quicker. Now I don't want to muck the contact pose either. So we want to make sure that the contact pose isn't vandalized too badly. We just need to move that tip just a little bit and we'll do the same thing here. Now here I've gone and shaded the whole thing in. so. That's great because that'll make life a little harder. But let's just do this. And because this is a clone, I think that'll clone onto this one too. So we only have to worry about this one and that one. So the treble spot was here as well. So we're going up to this position. So let's put onion skin on. So we're going from here to here to here. So here we can actually change this in between. And this one too could maybe use a slight change. Okay, so that will certainly, I think, prevent any potential sticking on the tip. We're not done yet with like error correction, but because it was th sort of catching my eye even at this stage, I didn't want to wait until we had done like a ton of work on it. At this point, I am going to call it and switch this back to so 25. So now it will play through to there. So what I need to do, and I'll, I'll just fast forward this. I'm going to do all the in-betweens and the... Uh, low point and the high point and try to copy as much from here onto here as I can. Pure, unadulterated tedium. So I'll spare you that and then I'll pick it back up again when I have the whole thing done. I'm just going to do a little pick up here. So as I'm copying the previous information from the down position, I want it to, to match as best as I can. So I encrypt a lassoed from the earlier one and then I used edit, paste into active layer. And that pasted the artwork into the exact layer rather than creating a new layer, which is obviously a pain. So that's kind of important. I'm also just to help me keep track of these. I'm making green the low point and I'm going to make, let's see if I can make this the sort of blue color for the high points. And I'll do that when I get to this one. So that way I can correlate each one. So it's easier to keep track of what I'm moving, what, what I'm trying to emulate from each side. So this is the first recoil, and this is the second recoil position, or squash position. Okay, so we want to copy this foot uh, from that side to this side. So that's just, doesn't have to be 100%, but just reasonably close, there to there. And this will be on the near side, so it'll be sort of facing us a little lower down. Let's do that. So it's actually the far side, right? So it's, this is the near one from there to there. This is the far one from here to here. So a little further away. So from here to there. And we also have a sort of a sticky area here with a tip. So let's give it a bit of area to move. And we'll shade that in too. Now take a note of the fact that this drawing looks awful. Uh, but you know, sometimes you get them. And in this case, it's going to be moving past, so I don't think we need to worry about it too much. We'll see what it looks like when it's actually moving properly. Now back to the high point. From here, I'm actually going to copy the earlier high point body, control C, and then here I'm going to edit, paste into active layer. I'm sure that they're in the right position yet. That'll help us to keep with both high points very consistent. Did I mention I have a Patreon? 
because I think if you've sat through this much shite, then you might be interested in my Patreon. So just saying, you don't have to join it, but uh, trying to get that going because it's nice to be able to pay the rent. Okay, I will then. Uh, yeah, I'm going to start putting um, movies on there that where I kind of open up a little bit about the industry and what I think and. Um, so maybe some stories, things that I don't necessarily, nothing libelous, but stuff that I wouldn't want to put maybe on YouTube. Mm. Some fun stuff, actually, but stuff that I, you know, if it was on YouTube, there'd be a danger that uh, this is a bit too exposed. Now, I have certain opinions about the industry that I probably, for professional reasons, wouldn't want to broadcast. So anyway, um, let's see here. I'll do the next one. So this is a one-third favor. So, okay. I used to work with a guy who was uh, very talented, um, but he had never worked in traditional animation, but he loved it and he had a very romantic idea about what it was like. And he had this idea in his head that he was going to make an animated movie. <laughs> uh, and I'm laughing because if you've been watching this so far, looking at this incredibly simple scene and seeing how much it takes to, to hand draw an action like this, never mind like a, a movie. It's a crazy idea. It just can't be done. I tried many times to talk sense into him. I wasn't too worried because there was no chance he was ever going to do it. Just not possible. But yeah, it was, uh, it's one of those things. People who haven't done it have a very weird idea of how much work is involved. So anyway, uh, the takeaway is when you begin to think about whether you want to apply yourself to a hand-drawn project, is it worth it or not? The end result, if you can pull it off, is always worth it. But how much time is it going to take? So you have to calculate. How much time is this drawing going to take me? Is it taking me, in this case, like just to do these very rough in-betweens? Yeah, I just calculate like how much does it take me to do one drawing. Might depend on the style too. Like if your project's very loose, the logistics are a lot easier. But if it's very clean, it might take you an hour to do one drawing. If you're working like we were in the Don Bluth Disney style, some would take even longer if they were very complex crowd scenes. So you've got to calculate that. What's your frame rate? This scene, because it's a walk cycle, it'll pan. It makes sense to have it on, on ones. If it wasn't doing this, then maybe you could do it on twos. So you wouldn't have to do as many drawings as I've just done. So that might change the uh, logistics of it. I know in the military, they have a saying, amateurs talk tactics, professionals talk logistics. So you have to be professional about it. How many, how long is your project? Is it three minutes, one minute? How long does it take to do a drawing? What's your average? How long is it going to take? If you're going to do it by yourself or do you have friends? Can you hire people? So there's a reason why they don't make hand-drawn features anymore. They're just much harder to do. Of course, when they do make them, they do tend to stand out. So there's the trade-off. I'm thinking of Cartoon Saloon, not too far from me here in, uh, I'm in Ireland. So they're in Kilkenny. Very interesting studio. Okay, that's quite off. Now here, I'm going to just hint at the, uh, the leg there. Okay, so that's it. We have the whole thing done. Um, I'm probably missing some uh, timing charts up here, but that's okay. So um, it feels like a proper walk. You can see where it's a little loose, but that's okay. Um, I mean, I, I didn't want this one to get too tied down. There's a couple of spots where we're losing volume on the foot. I can show you that right now. Here, foot gets very small. So that's an area that we should target on the passing position. Actually, the in-between is going into it. So from here that, that key on the recoil gets a bit small. So we'll fix that on a later pass and the in-betweens then are getting a bit wonk. So other than that, um, I think on the far side, not so much of an issue. But the basic range of motion feels good. He has a nice up and down, like he's sort of a Mickey Mouse kind of feel to him. That's his basic body type. Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse, Tom and Jerry. This is the kind of doughboy form, morphology or whatever you want to call it. But that's enough to be getting on with. And again, this is why if you if this is your first walk cycle, you don't mess with arms. Just that's focus on the legs. Get these working first. So, um, and there is a little bit of opposing action happening. You can see, you know, the you can sense the hips are moving sort of in a rotation here, which is good. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's about and probably more than enough. God knows how long this video is. I'm gonna put. The KRA file, that's the crypto file in the notes below. So if you want to download this file, you'll have easier access to it so you can mess around with it if you like. 
I'd like to take this through to like a fully completed, fully animated scene and uh, you know, see how far we can take this thing. And maybe do some cheats as well. I know I'd said I, I don't like cheating, but there's certainly times when you kind of have to. So we'll do the pure stuff if we can, like on the legs. But maybe if there's like a element on the head or the face, maybe we can do a cheat and do a cut and paste for a lot of that. That'd be really handy. They did it back in the day too when they animated traditionally. They cheated all the time. So whatever they could, they did because things took forever. Hopefully this has been of some use and uh, enlightenment. So you get a, a feel for the process anyway. And we'll see you with the next one where I will move on to the arms. Yeah, like and subscribe. I have a Patreon. All the links are in the notes. Blah, 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 blah.